Welcome to today's vlog. We're gonna talk about mashed potatoes. Everybody likes mashed potatoes. I know that's right. I'm a big fan of mashed potatoes. So I'm gonna give you a little history of our mashed potatoes. And um, yeah, so when we first opened in, let's go outside, it's a little noisy in here. We'll talk about the potato. Ugh. We're coming out here. Um, what time is it? It's like right before nine, rainy day. We're gonna capture this clip. How's the lighting? You think maybe over here? <laughs> anyway, so I'm here early on a Friday. We're gonna ca capture some content, but I wanna talk about mashed potatoes. So when we first opened, we've been saving mashed potatoes forever. And as I said before, if we don't personally like an item, we'll switch it up. And we had these mashed potatoes. I was not a big fan. They were powdered mashed potatoes. And you, you would take the, uh, like the little box or bag of potatoes, you'd take a scoop, you put it in some hot water, mix it together, and then it would get thickened up. And that's what we served when we first opened here on Coring. Wasn't a very good product and all of that. We decided, I don't know when we decided. I just didn't like the mashed potatoes and I was frustrated by it. And then one day I was looking at the invoice and I saw that these mashed potatoes were extremely expensive as well. And so it was like one of these things where it's like we're serving a inferior product that costs a lot more. And we make amazing potato wedges here. And I'm like, well, we have potatoes. Why don't we just make mashed potatoes? And so that was the first iteration. So uh, myself and one of our cooks at the time, we took our russet potatoes. Let's go back and check out a russet. Old school Idaho potatoes, but oh, you got jerky? Hello. Come on, Hope. Messing my video up. Oh. I'm sorry. Every time, every time. I keep them separate like you suggested, so. Every time. <laughs> anyway, so our first iteration of the mashed potatoes were worth our potatoes that we do our, our wedges with. So we'll look at, take a look at those. Oh, King Kong. Hey, say hi, Ruben. This is our morning prep. So these are Idaho potatoes from Idaho. So this is what, like I told you before on like our wedge video, we get, um, how many of these do we get in a week? The Idaho of these? 24 cases. 24? Holy moly. When I used to do it, it was like 16 cases. And then way back when, when I did an inventory, uh, I don't know, it wasn't a ton. But these are regular Idaho potatoes, nice big things. This is what we use for our wedges. And so, so when you buy potatoes, they always sell them in 15 pound, 50 pound allotments. And then the difference is the count on the potatoes, right? And so when you buy potatoes, it'll be 50 count, 60 count, 70 count, 80 count. That's the number of potatoes per 50 pounds. And so you get some consistency in the size of them. And we do a uh, 60 count. And this is what we use for our potato wedges. And so we wash these off, cut them, and do all that good stuff. We've been doing this for 30 years, these potato wedges, using real potatoes, all that stuff. But we weren't making real mashed potatoes, so it didn't make sense. So the first iteration, we took these potatoes, and with these you have to, for mashed potatoes, skin them. So we peeled them. Uh, made some butter, salt, and the potatoes came out amazing. We served them to the crew. Everybody loved it. And so next step was like, okay, let's put it on the menu. But what we had to figure out is if we we're going to serve a lot of mashed potatoes, this process of peeling takes a long time. And some people are good at it, some people are not. I mean, I could peel a potato like this in probably 30 seconds. Most people aren't very quick. Most people, you know, most people aren't trying to cut themselves. So you can actually go, most people don't know, if you ever have a peeler, you can go back and forth. Most people only go one direction. You can go back and forth and do it really quick. Anyway, that's for another episode. So we originally were using this potato, but it was so much work and prep that it just wasn't worth the time. So what we decided to do was go with a Yukon Gold. And they're, it's a more expensive potato, but they are delicious and you can leave the skin on. So these are Yukon Golds. 
and they've got a really, really thin skin, and the potato has a very creamy texture when you like boil it and cook it. And so we decided to go with this guy because you, we didn't have to peel it. So this was a, a labor saving step. And then also with these, these are a lot cleaner with um, Idaho potatoes you tend to have like a lot of eyes and different things like that that you gotta get rid of. So a ton of labor in that. Um, so we went with these and these make an amazing potato. So it had two advantages. One, we saved a lot of um, time on labor. And then two, I believe it's a, just a higher quality mashed potatoes. It's really, really good. Also why our potatoes are yellow. That's why they're also yellow too. Not food coloring, they're actually yellow. What we noticed as we went through the process of coming up with our recipe, we thought about adding garlic and doing some like roasted garlic. We thought about adding black pepper. But what we decided on is we wanted to appeal to the broadest palate. And also we found, um, not found out, but understood that you can make something amazing by just using amazing, amazing ingredients and amazing technique. And so that's what we did. We decided just to do high quality ingredients. And so our potatoes are super basic. It's potato, salt, milk. And that's pretty much it. They come out amazing. And we're gonna see that today. So what we do, we get these potatoes in. How many of these do we get a week now? Four cases. We do four 50 pound cases of these a week for mashed potatoes. So what we do, we do the same thing. These are quite big. And so we'll clean these off and we'll cut them down and then we put them to boil. So one thing we do with ours, we already got some boiling for today. These are the potatoes all cut up. One thing we do with ours is we um, salt the water and the water you know, kind of like how we do, we do pasta. We salt it real like nice salt so that we don't add salt when we're making the mashed potatoes. We find that the flavor gets all the way through the potatoes when you do it that way. So we're a big fan of that. In a little bit, we are going to blend, um, mix them all up and you'll see how they come out. They come out nice and fluffy. So before we got this beautiful mixer, which uh, has saved a lot of labor, I don't know why we haven't didn't buy this machine eight years ago. But before this machine, we did like everything by hand. So our cornbread, we mixed by hand. Our mashed potatoes, we mashed by hand. And then our kitchen manager, Ruben, which you, who you saw earlier, he's like, uh, why don't we get a mixer? <laughs> <laughs> the first time, I'll be honest, back in the day, you, as you're starting out, you're just cheap. You don't want to spend money. So the first iteration of our mixer, we got this like cheap Hamilton Beach mixer from like, uh, what was it, Walmart? Remember that mixer we used to have, the hand mixer? You can't buy residential stuff for a commercial kitchen. I think that broke in like two weeks. <laughs> It didn't work, and after that I'm like, no, I can't keep buying this stuff. But eventually I realized one day, I think one day after not working in the store for a while, I, I tried to make something. I think it was mashed potatoes or cornbread. I was making cornbread and I'm like, this S sucks. <laughs> and that day I was like, yeah, we gotta get one. Cause I think, I, was, I don't know why I was working in the kitchen. I was like, my arms start getting tired, Aww. got carpal tunnel, all that stuff. So I was like, so we got one of these. These are quite expensive. They're probably around two grand, but it's paid super dividends. I think the quality and consistency of what we do is, is higher. And then also it's allowed our kitchen manager, Ruben, to focus on other things, managing the other team members, the quality of the food and not mixing cornbread, because we do so many sheets of cornbread a day, so it's like, it's a lot of work. So this guy right here makes awesome mashed potatoes, but I'm gonna show you what we used to use. This is the OG. So back in the day, after the uh, mash would come out, we put them in one of these big hotel pans, and this is what we did. Every time we made mash, so like, it was real, mashed potatoes, it was hand mashed. Really hard to do, it was really high quality, but um, yeah, we gotta save, save our arms. That's what we used to do, use one of these, smash it down, and all that good stuff. No, now we are. Yeah, and this is how we used to make our cornbread. We used to take one of these guys, and oh, mix it in here, and it was just. And you would have to mix this thing for like five minutes per batch. And we make lots and lots and lots of cornbread. 
Like, you could just see, kind of prepped up. This is cornbread, just prepped for today. We've got more cornbread prepped over here for today. And then we've got more cornbread in the back. We go through a lot of cornbread. So it was a huge investment for us. I mean, it's super expensive. When you're first starting out, it's just not something you can do. But uh, Luis, yeah, looking like Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson. Yeah. <laughs> Look at him, he's got the beat it jacket on. What do you think? What's up? <laughs> so a um, couple minutes we'll be draining the water off and blending these potatoes. So we've just drained these mashed potatoes. They smell so delicious. All right. So we're pouring all the potatoes in. They've been drained off. See them in a mixer bowl. Yeah, these are hot. These guys are hot. And we got the big blade to kind of break up the potatoes, and then we're gonna go with the small one. Oh yeah, we put, we add butter too. Forgot unsalted butter. Look at this big old block. This also is great if somebody's not on time. Take it and you throw it. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> no, we don't do that. But use big block of butter. A little bit less than half a pound. Break up the butter. Let's get it. It's all good. We're gonna mix it, rough mix it for like two minutes. Slow, we're gonna add the butter first, then we'll add the milk. But it's really, really good. It's just very simple ingredients. Potatoes, salt, milk, butter. You can add your own black pepper. Like I said before, we don't add any of garlic or all these other flavors. Because I personally like it, but you know, we're trying to appeal to a broad palate. Kids like mashed potatoes start doing roasted garlic and rosemary and all this stuff, you're gonna get a little different vibe. So that's what we got. It's milk time, or the leche. We use whole milk at our milk now. Oh, take a look before you add the milk. You can kind of get the consistency. So you could actually do it just like this. It would be super thick. I know that's right. No, so this is just potatoes and butter. Because we're using those Yukon Gold potatoes, it's just super creamy. It's just really creamy. Um, that's a big advantage of, I think, over the Idaho potatoes. Idaho potatoes, you're gonna need a lot more um, like milk and butter to get that creaminess. These are just like so soft and smooth. Some people like the skin, some people don't, but we keep the skin in. It's a saving step and also kind of a, a nod to the quality and that, that we're using like high grade ingredients and all that stuff. Mmm, tengo una vaca lechera. No es una vaca cualquiera. Mira leche merengada. Que vaca tan salada. There we go. Look at that. Mm. Next step, we're gonna do the fine mixer. And we are gonna be rocking. We actually thought about getting like a ricer, making it like super fancy, but that's a whole nother, nother process. Whole nother process. Whole nother process. There you go. You see it's all incorporating. So we'll have it mixing for a couple minutes and then we're gonna pan it up. Meanwhile, this is, we're uh, over here prepping for our yams. So we've got our brown sugar, white sugar, and then we're gonna start adding um, some butter, add the yams in, add some vanilla extract, all that stuff. We're making them every day. So this is like our pre-opening time. As you can see, not a lot of cooks here. We do all of our prep time. And I know, look. For all y'all thinking we pre-make ours. No, we ain't pouring out of bags like Popeyes. I don't know what KFC does. We got real stove, we got real cooks, we do it. That's what it looks like all done. This is uh, mashed potatoes heaven. Let's talk about mashed baby. Let's talk about you and me. Let's talk about. We're gonna be sampling mash. You want to sample too, Anna? I know you like mash. Nope. You like it thick? Me too. All right, let's get it. You recording? Ooh, look at that. Velvety smooth. We don't even use that rice. Uh, it's so strong. It's so strong. We are going to do a taste test. So we're working with. Yeah. Good. Just using great ingredients. All you need. You want to taste test? I guess it's just me and the camera girl. Hope. That's all we got. This is how we do it. The rest is going to pan the rest up, make it look real pretty. 
That's all we got. Honest trying, get your result. What do you think? You gotta say it louder. She said magnificent. <laughs> I think that's it for this today's episode. Get your mash with the gravy on the bottom. That's it. Peace.